let's jump directly into it. So I have already explained to you how we can create a purchasing info record in SAP. However, there are important customizing settings that we need to take a look at when focusing on purchasing info records. So we know that we create a purchase info record via transaction code ME11. And here you can see this particular field for instance called info record and i told you last time that a purchase info record can be created with an external number assignment or an internal number assignment the internal number assignment there the system would automatically assign the number once we save the purchase info record and for the external assignment we would pre provide the number over here ourselves so for instance there is a particular number range let me just press enter now and you will see it will work because now this time I inserted an external number range and this external number range is defined and customizing as well, as I will show you in a minute. Yeah, you can see here I could also now save the info record with an external assignment. If I do not provide a number over here, then the number will be picked automatically by the system. However, let's now inspect the important customizing for a purchase info record. Therefore, we navigate to the transaction code slash N S P R O. We click on subreference IMG, but here you can see the materials management. Purchasing. And here you can already see purchasing info record. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different customizing settings we can maintain. Let's first focus on the define number range. So I always recommend you to inspect the documentation first. Let's click on this little symbol over here. And as you can see, it says the following. The following number ranges are defined as standard for stock material or for non-stock material. So in standard SAP distinguishes between stock material, so normal material with a material number and non-stock material, this would be if we create a purchase info record without inserting a material number, but with utilizing a material group instead of a number. So for instance, if we have a material that we do not store on stock, then we would use not a material number, as this material is not in our material master data ma being maintained or was not maintained over there. And yeah, therefore the non-stock material number range would be pulled. And as you can see, in standard two number ranges are assigned for both the stock material and the non-stock material. And normally SAP recommends us to take the settings as is. However, let's inspect this now. First of all, let's inspect the intervals. And here you can see exactly the intervals pre-shipped by SAP. So two for the internal number assignment over here and two for the external assignment. And we have also this button called groups because in standard we have two groups. We have the group IL, this is for the stock material. So where we have a material master record existing in the system and the IN is for the non-stock material. So for material groups, meaning for materials without material master. Let's actually go in the change mode so you can see what is behind the groups. If I double click here on one of the numbers, we can see that for instance here, the group is for info records for stock materials. And there the number ranges we've seen before, 03 and 04 are assigned. One is with internal number assignment and the other one is with external assignment, meaning that in the transaction code ME11, where we create the purchase info record, we could now utilize both the internal or the external assignment as both of the number ranges are assigned to this particular group. We will also see the same behavior for, for the group IN. You can see number ranges five and six are assigned also with the external and internal assignment. Imagine you want to create your own groups. Therefore, you would simply click here on the create button. You will provide an ID, let's say test group, for instance, and then the particular number range. Let me now establish one from zero to, let's say, one million and hit enter and then save. 
you will get a warning message, but that's okay. And the changes were saved. Going back, you can see now the new test group has been established. However, we can't use this test group out of Revox as of now. What we would need to do is we would need to assign the document type over here. This is the precise description. So this is really a document type. This one we would need to assign to our test group. And therefore we click on this one, for instance, and then we click on assign element group over here. And then we just need to select our test group over here. And now you can see the document type is assigned to our new test group. Why would you ever decide for such a scenario where you go with non-standard? Well, for instance, I can think about the following. If we only want internal number ranges to be used and we do not want the user to make a mistake and accidentally, let me go now to ME11, accidentally assign here a number and create a purchase info record in an external number range, then we could say, for instance, we create our groups ourselves. And as you know, for this group, I only assign one number range, which is, which is internal. So in this way, I could now influence the system to only allow internal number range, for instance. And yeah, this is it for the number ranges. Let me actually cancel for now and go back. We also have another important setting, which is called screen layout. The screen layout itself, let me click on this one, decides over all the fields which are mandatory, optional, and so on when we maintain our purchase info record. First of all, you can see here the field selection depending on the transaction. So for creating purchase info records, we use transaction ME11. So therefore, I double click on this one. And then you can see a bunch of field selection groups over here. And let me actually go from here to the end. So what we basically do is double click on this one and then you can see it starts and we can change if we like certain fields from optional to display or required entry. And I can just yeah go through those screens via this button over here. For instance, I could say that the material is a required entry, the plant and so on, which is anyways, but more on the detailed level of purchase info record, for instance, here, um, we could say something like vendor material, last purchase order. You have seen all those buttons before in my other video. And here we can basically always define which entries are required, optional or display only. Pretty straightforward. Going back, besides that, we have here the subnote called text for purchase info records. And here it says define texts. So actually, even though it says define text, we cannot define any more text than those which are pre-shipped by SAP, as this is hard coded. This counts for our purchase inf info records. So we have info record note and purchase order texts. And those two actually you can also see in the transaction ME, let's say 13 for displaying one of our info records. And I will quickly show you here in the text section you will find the info memo and the purchase order text. And those are exactly those two entries over here in the exact same sequence. So we can't really do anything over here. Yeah, and then we have here define copying rules. And basically those copying rules we can use to determine which text can be adopted from other objects. So for instance, from RFQs, from purchase orders, contracts, and so on to our purchasing info records. Meaning that we link the text types in the purchase info record with the text types in other objects. Let's actually click on this one. Yeah, and here we can again see our two text types, info record note, which is by the way used for internal purposes, and purchase order text, which is used to supplement the information from the purchasing info record when creating a new purchase order then the text will appear in the purchase order. And let's actually click on the latter one over here. Text linkages, and you can see SAP already predefined a bunch of source objects. What this actually means is that, for instance, the source text from the purchase order is being adopted by the purchase info record. And then there is this fixing indicator over here, which can be set to either blank. Blank means that the texts are copied to the target document directly. Then we have here this asterisk, 
This means that the texts are displayed in the target document and can be transferred. And if we change the text manually, they are transferred automatically. And there is also the capital letter N, which we could insert over here and then the texts are displayed in the target document, but they cannot be transferred. Yeah, going back, you can see some yeah, more advanced topics over here. Here, for instance, we could set a certificate category in the certificate text. For instance, for a certificate of origin to really check formally where the goods have been manufactured initially, in which country and so on. And we could insert here our own categories and any transaction ME11, let me just quickly switch. You could insert the certificate category over here in the general data and the origin data. As you can see here, the three predefined categories from SAP could be inserted over here. Yeah, going back, we have also two more indicators or two more parameters to be precise. The defined prices tree, where we could actually state for the different purchase organizations that the order price history is to be updated with the effective price or not. So normally the order price history is updated with the net price. However, if we specifically say here the effective price, by the way, the effective price is nothing else than the net price plus surpluses like charges, customs, taxes, and so on. So this could we could specify over here. And then we have maintain search helps. This is the last customizing step for purchase info records where we can, as the name already suggests, define what search helps we want to utilize when searching for purchasing info records. And here, best practice is that we should deactivate all the search helps that we do not need, since a large number of search helps can impair the performance of our system.